Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back, Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer. Let's talk about whole sign houses and uh, other house systems. That's a pretty hot topic and a topic that I've had numerous requests for, as there is not a great deal of information out there about what the differences are and why perhaps you might use one over the other, for example, or why you may actually use uh, whole sign houses as well as using one of the other house, house systems. I'm not going to discuss the um, <clears throat> technical uh, calculations, the, the, the methods around that. There's, there's no point in doing that for this video. There are other videos out there that uh, perhaps would we'll talk about that and the purpose for this is really just to show you guys from my perspective uh, over you know many years of looking at these things the uh, theory that I've come up with relative to why I would use whole sign houses and why I would use another house system for example Kosh now there are many different house systems to begin with okay um, I guess the first place to begin would be to say that the, the whole sign houses is around about 2,000 years old. So it, it basically predates back from 1st century BCE. It's from the Hellenistic period. It's one of the first uh, known sort of house systems to be developed and was really in play um, for around six, seven hundred years. And so it wasn't until later where um, other people, astrologers, mathematicians, um, all sorts of people created other house systems through um, exploration and so forth. And um, the whole sign houses really sort of, it, it became less popular over time Placidus uh, is one of the very well-known house systems that I'm sure a lot of you are aware of. Um, and I think it was around about the probably late 80s, 90s, where there's been this revival of whole sign houses. And especially now I can see that, you know, it's a very, very popular house system. Some people have just ditched all the other house systems and, and totally favour the whole sign houses. I'm not going to tell you which to favor and I'm not going to tell you that you should use one or the other. I'm just going to share with you how I use a couple of different house systems, one being the whole sign houses, why I use both, um, what the differences are. Going back to the fact that the whole sign houses was created about 2000 years ago, the first thing to consider is that 2,000 years ago, consciousness, humanity, the earth plane, uh, the collective unconscious was at a very different level of consciousness and evolution. So at those times, the way life was experienced, perceived and lived was um, very black and white and it was very literal. So the gods were up there on Mount Olympus, Jupiter, you know, Zeus, um, Venus, Aphrodite, Mercury, etc. It was a very literal um, perception of our own projection life again as i said it was very black and white so it was a lot more simple i think we could say as well um there wasn't so much you know diversity and uh consciousness around other ways of different ways of living and perceiving you know it was very basic it was you know you get married you have children um you're you're either poor or you're either rich or you're either working on the land or you are a highly educated person or you come from royalty those things are still in play to some effect of course but 
back then it was literally like that in, in, in such a black and white manner. So the what people wanted to know then was how long will I live, how much money will I make, will I be able to um, become this or become that, will I be able to have children, what age will I get married? You know, it's it's a very it was a very um, different way of perceiving life, um, different desires, different needs, different perceptions, and a lot of that was based on the limit, the limitations around the level of consciousness of humanity at those times. Clearly, projecting two thousand years forward, we've come a really long way relative to our understanding our understanding of our own psychology, our understanding of life, our philosophical uh, and or religious uh, orientations, our experiences in life, everything's very, very different to what it was 2000 years ago. There's, there's no argument there. The point to bringing this up is it's important to understand that when we're talking about wholesale houses, which is what was used in those days, the when, when a chart was observed and, and worked with at those times, again, like I said, the, the individual would go to an astrologer and ask the questions that relate to the, the points that I just made before. You know, when will I get married? When will I have children? Um, will I be able to, um, you know, get out of poverty or what, whatever it may have been. Will, will I get sick and die? You know, it was, it was very, very black and white. Um, and so the, the whole sign houses was used in that way as well. It, in other words, it reflected the everyday mundane experiences of the here and now of, of what was right there, right then. So it's the everyday mundane of here and now. In other words, the level of psychology and um, transpersonal work that people do now, the spiritual work that people do now, that didn't exist back then, not in the way that it does now. So our, our understanding of our own psychology has evolved, you know, in in such big ways over 2000 years. The other thing, of course, as well, is that through the work of people like Carl Jung, even Sigmund Freud, of course, and, and many others, I'm just pointing to some um, very popular um, people who have come through our time, but specifically Jung, and I love his work and I've always, um, done a lot of reading on, on his, um, his ideas, his theories, his work and so forth. But it is because of the work that he brought through psychology and astrology, which helped us understand the archetypes, which are the zodiac signs, the planets, and the understanding that all the archetypes actually exist inside us, within us. They're not out there. So the concept of projection that um, expanded the depth of psychoanalysis, psychotherapeutic work is largely contributed to, to Jung's work. He was the one that brought into the consciousness of humanity that whatever you are seeing out there is largely a reflection of what's going on in here. So the point is, 2,000 years ago when Holstein Houses was used, that's not the way people thought. They did not think that um, the, the planet Jupiter is, is, a, you know, is a celestial body, it's a planet. It was the thinking was that that is a god on Mount Olympus. It was very literal, the way people thought. So again, as time has fast forward, uh, we have developed and become more conscious and have a greater understanding uh, of our own shadow side, um, dark side, unconscious components, subconscious components, uh, inner life, soul life, spirituality, 
uh, transpersonal components of our existence, the work that we do around that, these are all fairly new in compared to 2,000 years ago, uh, very new levels of awareness and consciousness that the, the human race collectively has some some understanding or connection to. So that's the first thing that I want to say that's really important to understand that. I'm going to use two examples today and they're two famous people so that helps us because we all know a little bit about them or at least we know who they are. One person is Madonna, the singer, and the other person is uh, Johnny Depp who also was a musician in his early life and early career. Um, but as time has gone on, he moved into acting and that's where he's sort of uh, stayed, if you like. So we're going to look at both of their charts in a whole sign house system and in a Kosh house system. So uh, let me see. Okay. So when you're working with whole sign houses, what happens is that, that there's, there's a few benefits to working with whole sign houses. And um, what, one of the main benefits actually is that if you don't know your exact time of birth, but you know your rising sign, somehow you know your rising sign, whether it's because you've got a rough time of birth or you somehow work out what your ascendant sign is. That's not impossible. People have done that. Then whole sign houses is um, awesome for those reasons, right? When you don't have an exact time of birth um, or even had a time of birth to begin with, but somehow through uh, lots of uh, looking at your chart and playing around with different ascendants and things like that and, um, you know, seeing things in different houses. It takes practice, it takes time, it takes, you know, it's not something you work out like that instantly. You have to really know yourself as well. And so that's another benefit of whole sign houses if you don't have an exact time of birth. Um, one of the other great things about whole sign houses is the technique of annual perfections. So that is a, a forecasting tool or technique and that is based on every single solar return year. When we have our birthday, we will enter a particular house in the chart and so it begins at birth, which is the ascendant. So your first year of life is characterised by the ascendant and the ruling planet to your ascendant becomes the lord of the year, as it's called. So if we wanted to look at the first 12 months of your life, we would look at what is, the, well, first of all, what is your ascendant, of course? What is the ruling planet to your ascendant? That ruling planet, let's just say it was Mars, because you had Aries or Scorpio on the ascendant. Now, remember, with these traditional uh, annual perfections, which is quite an old uh, forecasting system and tool, and as is the whole sign houses, the transpersonal planets are not taken into consideration. Now, that's for you to play around with and, and you know, uh, decide down the track. You know, I wouldn't say don't consider Neptune, Uranus and Pluto, but you it is important if you are working with annual perfections to consider the traditional ruler as being the, the lord of the year, depending on which house you are in. So when you are one, uh, from birth to one, you're in the first house. At two years of age, you enter the second house. At three year, years of age, you enter the third house and so on and so forth. And it just keeps going around and around and around and around, depending on, you know, the length of your life. So every 12 years, we come back to the ascendant. So at 12 years of age, you're back at the ascendant. At 24 years of age, you're back at the ascendant. At 36 years of age, you're back at the ascendant, and so on and so forth. And 
I do use uh, annual perfections actually in my forecast work in amongst a number of other different uh, forecasting methods and tools that I use. I find that annual perfections are actually quite revealing and quite telling, especially when we're talking about the everyday mundane dealings of things. It's going to be very, very revealing. So that's another reason why whole sign houses is, is very useful. So if you're working with annual perfections, you, you would need to use the whole sign houses. Now that doesn't mean that you must just work with whole sign houses with your chart all the time. In fact, I, I, I don't do that. I use whole sign houses specifically for uh, annual perfections when I'm uh, doing forecast work for people. So those are the two main reasons that, in my opinion, that um, whole sign houses can be very useful. If you don't have an exact time of birth and when you are working with annual perfections, it, it's, it's like it's, it's fairly literal kind of <laughs> what shows up. It's really powerful. So let me uh, share my screen and let's just start looking at a couple of things. So... Um, okay, so I'll, I'll start with Madonna. And um, so this is uh, the, the time of birth that's been given. I know there has been some apparent discrepancies about her time. And I, my understanding is that that's that's come through Madonna actually just making a few comments, um, more or less trying to confuse the public because, uh, and to her own right, you know, she's a very private person. I mean, you know, look at that 12th house, right, to begin with. That it makes total sense. That 12th house to me, I know a lot about her because I've, I've, you know, I've been listening to her music since I was a little kid and I've, I've followed her journey, you know, um, for a long time and I sort of pay attention to uh, what goes on in her life. I just find her a fascinating uh, personality. So before we look at the differences between uh, whole sign houses and um, Kosh house, house system, which is another one that I use, I just want to show you something if you are using uh, solar fire. So let's just say you've got Madonna's chart or whoever's chart on the screen, your own chart. You would go to the left hand side where it says chart and you would go to, you can hit um, just edit or if you want to keep the original chart of a house system that you've got the chart set to. So say you've got your chart set to um, Kosh or Placidus and you want to keep that chart and you just want to create another chart, your chart that is, and just um, put the whole sign house system in there, you just hit copy and edit chart. So it keeps your original chart on the screen and now you are creating your chart again through a different house system. And so you would go over to the right hand side where it says house system and if you click on the arrow, you'll see the, the drop down window that opens up all these different house systems. And there are quite a few there. And I'm not going to go through every single one of them. <clears throat> you can see there's whole sign houses, for example. Okay. And um, Campanus, Kosh, Meridian, <clears throat> uh, Placidus, uh, Porphyry. Porphyry is the house system that Jeffrey Wolf Green recommends in EA, Evolutionary Astrology. So anyway, these are all the different house systems, okay? Um, <clears throat> and they've all been created by specific people at specific times in history and usually the house system is uh, the person's surname or the person's name, right? So the Kosh house system, by the way, which is uh, the main one that I use, that's probably one of the um, most recent house systems that were created, whereas the others were created you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. The Kosh house system was created 
uh, in the early 70s by a German guy called Walter Koch, and hence the house system is called Koch, right? So that's one of the um, the more recent, the most recent, I think, house systems that, that has been devised. Now, um, <clears throat> the other thing that is very important you understand, and this is, so a lot of this stuff is fairly advanced and fa fairly technical. For some people it won't be, for many people it will be. Either way, if you're working with astrology, whether it's for your own personal interests or whether you are developing professionally, you do need to understand these uh, components of astrology. So going back to Madonna's chart, in, in this chart, I'm actually showing you the Placidus house system, okay? What you can see is that she has eight degrees of Virgo ascendant. You can see that the second house begins at one degree and 29 minutes of Libra. The third house is zero uh, Scorpio and six minutes. The fourth house is three degrees of Sagittarius and 44 minutes. And if you go right around the wheel, these lines where you see a zodiac glyph and numbers next to them, that shows you where that house begins. So the ascendant begins when we are using Placidus, it begins at eight degrees of Virgo, and the second house begins at one degree of Libra. You need to kind of understand the mechanics of that as well, right? If the ascendant is eight degrees of Virgo, that means that um, there is Virgo contained in the 12th house as well. Why? Because the ascendant begins at eight. So where's, where's the other degrees of Virgo? They're actually uh, up here in the 12th house, right? <clears throat> so a lot of people have said, you know, uh, through uh, messages they've, you know, written underneath the post that I made recently where I said, are you guys interested in, in me making a video about house systems? And, and so anyway, some people said, um, yeah, I have, you know, all these, um, I have two signs or, you know, a sign and a half contained in one house. And, you know, I have all these planets in the 12th. And then when I use whole sign houses, they're all in the first. So which is the right one? And I don't know which one to use. And it's left me confused. And, and I get that it would leave you confused. We'll discuss that um, further in a minute. I just want to show you guys another thing. Uh, relative to the house cusps. Now, when you are using any of the house systems except the whole sign houses, um, and I think, no, equal houses, equal houses, it looks like whole sign, but it's actually different. Anyway, leave that one out for now. Placidus houses gives us the ascendant of eight degrees. Obviously, the descendant is eight degrees. So the, the four angles, which is the ascendant, the IC, the descendant, and the MC, those degrees never change regardless of which house system you use. That's the first thing you need to know. It will change if you use whole sign houses because with whole sign houses, what happens is everything is at zero. So you're, if, if we're looking at Madonna's chart, this would be zero Virgo. Her second house would be zero Libra. The third house is zero Scorpio here. Anyway, and so on and so forth. But with other house systems, the degrees on the angles, regardless of which house system you use, will not change. What does change, however, is what's called the intermediate house cusps which are these ones in between, the ones in between the four angles. So two, three, five, six, seven, eight, 11, and 12. They are the intermediate house cusps. And the numbers, the degrees on those will change depending on which house system you use. That's another thing to, uh, to understand. So let me just show you. 
Uh, this is Placidus, eight degrees on the ascendant and one degree and a half on the second house cusp. So just keep a note, a mental note of that. Let's go to um, let's go to Kosh. Is this Kosh? Yes. Okay. Now look at what's happened with the Kosh house system. You can see that the four angles, they're exactly the same. The ascendant was eight degrees of Virgo when we looked at Madonna's chart in the Placidus house system. So nothing's changed there. Like I said to you, regardless of which house system you use, the four angles, the degrees on the four angles will not change ever. Look at her second house cusp now. It's six degrees and 49 minutes, virtually seven degrees. And in Placidus, it was one degree. That's a huge difference. It's not always um, so huge. Sometimes it is and sometimes it's even more. It just depends. It depends on um, the person's location of birth and, and the house system in question that you are using. So that's, that's um, a couple of things. Let's just back up there. Whole sign houses always has zero degrees on every house cusp. Uh, all the other house systems you will still have the same degrees on the four angles and what will change depending on the house system you use will be the intermediate house cusps those are the first three things to note um, and one other thing as well that comes into play when you are working with different house systems exploring with different house systems is this when people are born um, in extreme latitude, so a, a, a fair distance, you know, from the equator. So Northern Ireland, Cal uh, Canada, Alaska, Scotland, you know, they're, they're very high uh, altitudes, right? Very uh, high northern parts of the globe. The chart is really strange when, when you go into such high um, latitudes. What can happen, and I've seen this many times, is that when you're using these different house systems, what will happen is a person, just as an example, a person's 10th house, where it's normally 30 degrees, However, it's usually not 30 degrees when you're using different house systems. So, for example, looking at Madonna's chart, she's got three degrees Gemini on the MC and then uh, 10 degrees uh, Cancer on the 11th house cusp. Now, my maths is not super genius, so just give me a moment. So basically we've got 27 degrees of Gemini contained in the 10th house and we also have another 10 degrees so what's that 30 about 37 degrees fairly wide given that normally a house is equal to 30 degrees if she was born in a very high latitude what could happen is that the 10th house I've seen this that the 10th house can become 60 degrees wide um, which is huge, which is like seriously huge. So suddenly if, if somebody had, um, you know, uh, a lot of planets around uh, the ninth and 10th house, if they were born in a very high latitude, what could happen is that that house, which expands and, and becomes so huge, it bunches everything up together in the one house because that house is equal to 60 degrees for example that's just something that you may notice if you are working with charts of people who are born um, in extreme latitude there are other places as well I just named a few right so that's another thing to notice because if you see that you, you may look at it and think um, have I met is the computer playing up on me have I made a mistake what's going on here how, how has this house become so big it happens in certain places uh, that people are born in. So that's another thing to uh, keep in mind. Now, so 
with Madonna's chart, you can see that she's got all these planets pretty much in the 12th house, okay? And really, it's just the Mercury and Ceres that's conjunct the Ascendant and in the first house relative to the Kosh house system, which is the house system that I use, that I use when I rectify charts. Now, we know that, well, I'm sure many of you are aware that Madonna is an absolute health freak. Like she is, um, as long as she's been going, you know, she's been, uh, she's got a, a very uh, specific regime in exercise and health in her life. And she always has and she still has. I mean, she's, what, 62 and uh, yet while she's had some, you know, <laughs> a bit of assistance on her face with certain prods and whatnots, and she looks like she's 20 years old again, it's quite amazing, um, you know, her body is uh, still in pretty good shape. Um, she's, she's very health conscious, okay, that's what I'm getting at. Um, and she has had a... a what is it? A, a hip injury, I think she had just recently. I think it was a hip injury. She had a fall, so that's been pretty hard on her, actually. Um, so anyway, the point is that she's an individual who's a you know large personality, bigger than life type of personality, who's been in the public eye for you know what is it, um, forty years or something like that. She's still going, uh, and. She's been quite, you know, uh, public and open about her fitness, her, her uh, fitness dedication, you know. And that's all the Virgo, right? And, and Pluto in Virgo conjunct Mercury in Virgo conjunct Moon in Virgo. You know, Virgo is the archetype of health, nutrition, exercise, clean body, you know, all that sort of stuff, right? And Pluto's there, so she's obsessive about it. She always has been. Um, so all those planets, as I said, are in the 12th house, in the Kosh house system. Now in the Kosh house system, and these are going to be the, the distinctions that I'm making between whole sign house and another house system in terms of understanding how they differ and why indeed you can use both. And in fact, I suggest that you do actually. In this chart, this is her, we could say, and this is actually the work of myself and my friend, colleague and mentor, whom I've been doing astrology with for the past 25 years. I first learnt with him. He's uh, been practising astrology now for 46 years. He's been around a long time. He's uh, a very wise wise uh, man and soul and one of the most brilliant astrologers like he really is <laughs> um, anyway so through all the different because we you know we constantly have chats we, we're looking at charts like we look at our friends our family we've been doing that for years we look at a lot of fam famous people's charts. We, uh, you know, politics, you know, movie stars, whoever. We, we, we are always looking at things, exploring things and learning, right? And we've been doing that for a very long time. So over quite some time now, we've been exploring this whole sign house and another house system chart. And what we've both come to understand and recognize and see through observation and correlation is that the Kosh house system or any other, if you were using Placidus, for example, or um, Porphyry, which is the one that uh, Jeffrey Wolf Green uses, those house systems show you your, your fate, your karma, your dharma, your destiny, 
your soul's evolutionary path. So these, the position of these planets and the signs and the aspects and all the multi-faceted layers involved in this 360 degree circle and there are so many things in this, so many things that you can't see with your naked eye. That's when we start looking at harmonic charts, for example. Harmonic charts show you something that you cannot see in this 360 degree circle. A harmonic chart will show you something very specific by the method and the way it breaks it all down and brings it into focus. So a harmonic chart is like getting a, a microscope and zooming into a very specific thing you want to zoom into and you want to see what's there. That's where harmonic charts are very useful. That's another subject matter, but I, I'm just, I'm just uh, pointing to the um, the significance of the chart being multifaceted, multi-layered in so many ways, especially from the soul's evolutionary level of where it's at at any given life. This is a blueprint, a map of what the soul is navigating through in order for its own evolution. And of course, that's going to imply karma and dharma, the soul's desires and intentions, and what is operating on the external personality level as well, of course. So when you're working with the Kosh house system or the Placidus or uh, Porphyry, there are others as well, like I said, you would understand the birth chart from the level that I just described. That is that it describes, it reflects the absolute blueprint of your soul's evolution, the karma and the dharma of what you are here to integrate, actualize and resolve and evolve through. So for Madonna, these planets, which are all in the uh, 12th house in the Kosh house system, this 12th house is huge, huge, huge karma for her life journey and story. And there are so many things we could say about that or to that, and we won't because that will be, you know, an analysis on her chart and I'm not here to do that today but one thing that I do want to point to and I follow Madonna on Instagram and uh, occasionally I'll if she does a live I'll, I'll just jump on and watch if I'm free and I'm interested in that moment and I recently did that and I was watching her um, interact with she had a lady sitting with her who's actually helping her write uh, the story of her life at the moment. And uh, there's something very fascinating about that relative to whole sign houses and annual perfections, which I'll get to in a minute, demonstrating the power of annual perfections and the whole sign houses. Anyway, she's sitting there and uh, at one stage she, Madonna is, She's quite a complex lady, a very talented, complex lady, and quite sort of private and mysterious, although some people think, well, no, she's always putting herself out there. But Madonna has this other side to her that is not, is not seen in the public, and that's the 12th house, which is very hidden. Um, the 12th house can often signify feeling... Uh, really isolated and alone in the world. Even one planet, a personal planet in the 12th house, can trigger those sorts of feelings in a person through their life journey. And imagine having all those planets in the 12th house. So here you have this extraordinary personality, famous person who's 
you know, she's got all the money she needs. She can, she's got all the luxuries, but she's one of the, she's virtually said this herself. She's so lonely. She's, um, she feels alone, even though she's this incredibly, you know, famous, big personality, you know, could have people around her all the time. And she does for when she's preparing uh, her creative, you know, aspects of life. She needs people around her, obviously, because they contribute to the final result of everything we see, whether it's an album or her on stage or a musical or whatever it may be. She doesn't do all that alone. She's got a team of people with her. Um, but she, anyway, this, this just recently when I saw her speaking, she said... Um, the, the, the lady that was sitting with her who was writing, as in writing Madonna's story of life, you know, being born like in the slums, as it were, you know, being born into, she was born into poverty. She's, she's self-made, you know, um, how she did it and, and whether it was integral all the time or, or not, it's, it's not really for us to judge anyway. It's her business. She did what she did, but she, she's self-made. Um, so anyway, she said that she she made a sarcastic comment, something to the effect of um, it was in the context of what the lady was talking about, and I can't quite remember, but it was it was in the context of an aspect of Madonna's life where she's felt that she's never really had any friends. She's always been sort of alone. And that's a classic 12th house uh, experience. And feeling when you've got you know a heavy 12th house which she does so in other words this 12th house is the the matters that are uh, being experienced and felt and um, that could be deeply uh, painful and whatever else is going on this is her karma her dharma her soul's evolution her soul's journey and growth this is what she's working through on a soul level so you know people might look at her and think because she's this you know personality and famous person has all this money and whatever that you know her whole life is fine and dandy and everything's great well it's not she's for a start she's had tremendous heartbreak in relationships she hasn't had um a lot of joy and happiness in relationships and that's because her Venus um, is in a position that's called ex-cond, <laughs> a term uh, coined by Rob Hand and you guys would know of Rob Hand, I've mentioned him a lot now especially um, in the video that I did recently about my favourite books. So there's, there's this whole other level in astrology that uh, corresponds to planets being in sect or out of sect which is primarily based on whether you are a day birth or a night birth so some planets operate much better um, next to the sun other planets operate better away from the sun and if you are a day birth or a night birth it's going to make a difference and and so on and so forth that that's a whole other model and a whole other layer which is a whole other video, <laughs> but just just coming back to Madonna, her Venus is in really bad shape based on that scoring system of in and out of sect. Her Venus couldn't be more out of sect than it is. And what's Venus? It's love and relationships, right? And obviously creativity and all those other things as well. But, yeah, her Venus is not doing too great based on that particular model. It's doing great in other ways, you know, relative to her popularity, Venus in Leo in the 11th. She's very popular, always has been, still is. So there's a lot of different facets to each planetary position, sign it's in, house it's in, aspects to it, the different uh, layers as that planet is expressed and manifested, integrated and experienced, right? There's many different uh, ways of assessing things, which is why astrology is so complex and yet so magical and infinite in the learning.
we never, ever, ever, ever get to a point when we are studying astrology or working with astrology and say, you know, I absolutely know everything about it. There's, there's no one that could say that. No one knows everything anyway about anything. <laughs> so, so relative to her, her soul's sort of fate journey, evolution, karma and dharma, she's working through a heavy 12th house uh, level of life which we can't see and we don't know about because it's not public. We just see the Venus in Leo and the sun in Leo, right? That's what we see. We see all the Leo, the theatrical drama, um, acting, singing, etc. That's what she wants people to see. That's what she shows. But there's this whole other dimension to her life, which is the 12th house, that is not seen because the 12th house is hidden from view. There'd be many things and processes and experience that she herself has been through, is going through and will go through that is even difficult for herself a lot of the time perhaps to fully comprehend and understand what is actually going on because this is the house of the unconscious. So when you look at her chart through whole sign houses, Here's what happens. Remember the, <laughs> sorry, that's someone's alarm thing going off in my building. Hopefully there's no fire. Hmm. Um, okay. Juno, Pluto, Mercury, uh, we're all in the 12th house, right, in the normal system, the Kosh house system. This is whole sign houses now, so you can see her chart now, like I said at the very beginning, every single cusp and angle of the entire 360 degrees, the entire zodiac, the entire chart is at zero degrees. Zero Virgo, zero Libra, zero Scorpio, zero Sag, zero Capricorn, etc., etc. This is whole sign houses. So whole sign house, meaning that the whole sign is contained in the one place. And a way to explain this is that all these planets that have moved now into the first house describe what she lives and works through and expresses and experiences on an everyday mundane level in her personal environment, first house, connecting to Mercury and Pluto and, of course, Juno, um, and her ascendant is down here now in the uh, later part of the uh, first house. The moon, of course, is still there and Ceres, of course, is still there because everything that was in Virgo, which was leaning into the 12th house because of the Kosh house system, well, now it's dropped into the first house because Virgo now is just contained in the first house. Part of Virgo is no longer in the 12th. You can see that just by looking at it, right? So one way to identify what this means for her, this, remember, the chart that we looked at before, as I said, it describes her, her, her karma, dharma, fate, destiny, soul's evolution. The, the, the deeper, unconscious, Psych, deep, deep, deep psychological soul uh, processes and experiences and journeys that she's working through, which are mostly hidden, 12th house. This now, however, the whole sign houses is speaking to her everyday workings, you know, her everyday mundane world and how she operates on that level. And it's, it's all dictated by Pluto Mercury, Moon as well, of course. Um, so we, I guess, well, what does that mean, right? What it means is that this describes her obsession with her physical body. The, the first house describes the physical body and health and well-being. 
well-being connects to the sixth house as well, of course, but your actual physical body, this flesh that you are breathing through, that's the first house. So Pluto in the first house is an individual that consistently reinvents themselves. And what has Madonna done over the years? She's always reinvented herself through her craft and creativity and she's obsessed with it <laughs> and it is all in Virgo so she's always uh, been able to maintain uh, her her obsession her devotion dedication uh, discipline consistency with her health and and how she continuously regenerates and reinvents herself that's how she lives on an everyday, day-to-day -day basis. She's always um, involved, preoccupied, engaged with those sorts of things. Whereas in the Kosh House system, all this stuff was in, pushed up in the 12th. So then what we're looking at is we're looking at the same person, the same soul, the same chart, but we're looking at the experiences of how that soul is integrating and evolving and then how the person is operating on an everyday day-to-day -day basis and the planets that could shift into a different house which they frequently do for people when you go from a kosh house system to a whole sign house it's it's more typical that most people will experience a shift of planets into other houses it's not saying that um, if you had, um, what can I think of an example of? Um, okay, so I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I've got Venus in the third house normally, right? And that describes Venus in Pisces. It describes my connection to my two siblings. That's one level. Um, it describes, and it's a deep connection with both of them, Venus in Pisces, soul, you know, soul, soul. And the love that I have for both of my siblings. It also describes uh, the fact that we all danced together when we were growing up. We, we all, my, my father was a dancer, we, we've all danced through our lives. We, we used to, we were in... Um, <laughs> we were in groups and, and we'd, we'd perform and we had sort of challenges with other groups and, you know, it was, it was pretty full on. Like as teenagers, that's, that's what we did. We did a lot of that. That was, we, we were just obsessed with, with dance. We just, that's all we wanted to do, listen to music and dance. And we did that. It was probably the most joyous years of my life, really, in a lot of ways. So that's Venus in the third house for me. That's, that's the, the love of, music and dance. Venus is what you love and enjoy and certainly Venus is the planet that would connect to music and dancing and especially in Pisces. So that describes that whole uh, connection I have with my siblings and, and how that sort of played out, right? Now in whole sign houses my Venus goes into the second house. So how do I read that? Well how I read that is that my, my karma and my dharma relative to my soul's evolution, my two siblings are, are such an important component of my evolution and growth and karma and what I've been through in that journey. Now, I've just given you some, you know, spectacular highlights of the joyous times, but there's been other, other levels of layers of things that have gone on which I don't care to discuss publicly and... Um, that would be described by other things in my third house as well, right? Anyway, the point is with Venus moving into my second house through whole sign houses, what that reflects for me is on an every day-to-day -day level, it, it's very simple and there's, there's a few different layers, but I'll just point to one thing. It basically reflects my love and appreciation of beautiful things, you know, like crystals, jewellery, um, 
you know, my my personal space is is decked out, I feel, in a way that is very Venus. It's very Venusian. Soft colours, um, it's, it's very feminine, you know, and those those aspects of life which as much as they are just material things, they are things that give me great pleasure and I feel comfortable and I thoroughly enjoy. That's my Venus in the second house in whole sign houses, just as a simple example, right? So that's that's how you start to kind of understand and work with um, Kosh house system or Porphyry house system or Placidus or any others versus whole sign houses. You're not favoring one over the other. You're just finding a way to distinguish how the two charts are playing out in your life. And I've given you guys some good examples of, first of all, my own personal life and second of all, Madonna as well, okay? So that's that's it, basically. That's it. That's, that's the distinction, okay? Um, what was I going to say there? Uh, okay. Just one more example, and then I'll uh, possibly head off. All right, Johnny Depp. <laughs> He's a classic. I love Johnny Depp as well. Amazing actor. Anyway, regardless of all of that. So here's his uh, birth chart with Kosh house system, and look at Mars. It's conjunct Uranus in the first house. It's very late in the first house, yes, but it's still in the first house. So in terms of his evolution and his karma and dharma and growth and all of that on those deeper levels, what he's integrating and um, exploring and learning, because the first house is is what we're learning about ourselves in our environment when we've got planets in the first house we are always discovering something new about ourselves relative to those planets in the first in some kind of way especially when they're being hit off by transit progression etc anyway he's a very mars uranus in the first house um persona personality right he's um He's very uh, different and unusual. Um, he's, he's kind of, I don't know if eccentric is the right word, but he's got this real cool swag about him that's really unique. It's just not like every other Hollywood kind of hot-looking guy. <laughs> um, I mean, there's much more to it than that. I'm, I'm speaking in very light ways at the moment. Uh, and the Mars in the first house is also uh, his literally his his armor and his persona and and how um, he's also seen by others and how he presents. That's the Mars Uranus in the first. So people think he's a bit of a rebel. They always have. Um, he can be very reckless with his behavior. Uh, the Mars is where he's first of all he's taken a lot a lot of roles through his movies where he's been. Um, a real Mars type of character um, just through the role that is played, you know, very masculine, it could be very aggressive, it could be very energetic, it's very Mars-like. You don't see him playing a, a Venus feminine, you know, or moon role, do you? He's always playing something that's pretty sort of um, really vibrant and energised and he's very masculine. He's like the, the typical masculine, you know, sort of hunk <laughs> in Hollywood. Um, it also describes his, he's had a bit of a history with lashing out at people. Um, he's been sued, you know, a, a number of different times, including by allegations by ex-partners. Um, there's been allegations by people he's worked with that um, he's been aggressive, he's been charged and sued and taken to court for trashing a hotel room. You know, that's all Mars in the first house. <laughs> so here's the interesting thing. Uh, when we go to his whole sign houses, which is there, now Mars is in the second house. 
Of course, so are all these other uh, little bodies here, but we're not going to focus on those today. I just want to point to Mars specifically, and I guess um, Uranus as well, because both Mars and Uranus were in the first house before, right? So the chart we're looking at before, again, that's, that's his whole uh, life journey, his evolution, how he's individuating, how he's growing, how he's evolving, how he's experiencing himself through those energies relative to how he pushes his energy out. First house is how we push energy out. And what comes back at us are the consequences through different scenarios and responses or reactions by others. And that is how uh, Aries, first house, Mars people uh, experience and learn through acting on things and seeing what the result is, what the consequences are. That's like what a conjunction aspect does as well. So now in the second house, here's how it's operating. And this is operating literally at the everyday mundane level relative to his recklessness with his money. He, <laughs> he spends about $2 million every month um, just on just the, the, the things that he enjoys, you know, the things that he, um, the things that give him temporary pleasure. So someone like you and me um, might have a really, you know, modest uh, amount per month that we spend like, um, let's just take rent and all those other things out and let's just think about uh, the pleasures, delights, social activities. You might have a budget of, I don't know, $500 a month, $300 a month. I don't know. It just depends. Well, he, he does this with $2 million US every month. Um, he spends $30,000 on wine every month. The point is that uh, he's totally reckless with his money. That's Mars Uranus in the second house through whole sign house system that you otherwise do not see with the other house systems, but we see it through the whole sign houses. This, this uh, recklessness with money, it's a big thing because it's not just a one-off uh, being uh, reckless just one, one, once off in his life. He's, this, is, this is his pattern. This is how he lives. He's been sued by um, people that have worked for him because they are, they are alleging that he's ripped them off or hasn't paid them accordingly. Um, all sorts of there's all sorts of allegations and stories. It's all there in his, um, you know, in the history. If you look up his name, you can see it. I'm, you know, this is not coming out of my own head. <laughs> so what we see then is through whole sign houses is that the the Uranus, Mars, and let's throw in Pluto. Of course, it acts as that really impulsive, um, obsessive uh, dealings with spending money it's just really rash and impulsive there's there's not a lot of thought that goes into um how he manages his his money he, he doesn't he doesn't get the world of money he just he just does a uranus mars pluto thing that's what he does and he's found himself in lots of situations where he's been in you know um severe debt at times and he's he's got to pay out this person and that person because he just he just doesn't get the world of money that's because he has these planets in the second house that's how it operates on an everyday mundane level whereas when you look at the kosh house system for instance those planets are not in the second house so mars in the second house on an everyday mundane level forget about the evolutionary level just the everyday mundane level would possibly reflect an individual who is very reckless with their money, impulsive. Now, I know somebody in my own life, somebody personal to me, <clears throat> who uh, has Mars in the first house, like Johnny Depp, um, and is a very Mars type of individual in his overall way of life and evolution and growth. 
the way he expresses himself, the way others see him and so on and so forth. And in his whole sign house system, Mars moves in the second house just in the same way as it does for Johnny Depp. So this is someone I know in my personal life, right? And it's the same, it's the same story and pattern. This individual uh, is not great with managing money, very reckless, very impulsive, just uh, will we'll just do something uh, impulsively without really thinking about it financially, just stuff that we normally wouldn't do because we normally, um, well, is there such a thing as normal? But generally speaking, most people would kind of have some awareness, some level of control over their money and how they spend it and, you know, what they need to keep aside for, for this, this and that. These sorts of individuals, they don't think like that. <laughs> they just act through the impulse of marks. Okay, so that yeah, I've just given you guys two examples. One uh, final thing before I go that I forgot to mention with Madonna. As I said to you, uh, to you guys, she's uh, sixty-two years old now, right? So when we go back to Whole sign houses and annual perfections, which is a technique that I suggested is uh, a great tool and technique for forecast, which I use a lot. Um, and is used with whole sign houses. Okay, so Madonna is 63, which actually places her, 62, sorry, which places her at the third house. Now I'll show you why. Um, remember every 12 years we come back to the ascendant so let's just say we've gone around this wheel a few times uh, 12 24 36 48 let's just make her 48 years of age so 48 uh, then 49 years of age she's in the second so 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60 brings her back to the ascendant. 61 years of age, she's in the second. And 62 years of age, which was her birthday in uh, August last year. And she'll be in that perfected year until her birthday in August this year. So that's that's how you calculate it. It's from birthday to birthday. It's not from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. It's from your actual birth month to your birth month the following year. So at the age of 63, she went to uh, her third house, which is ruled by Mars because it's Scorpio on the third house. There's many, many different things you would assess about this, and I'm not going to go into that now. But one thing I wanted to just highlight, which I thought was uh, very telling, remember I said that when you're using whole sign house system and you're working with annual perfections, you and you look at the, the Lord of the year and the year ahead for you, it's, sometimes it's just so literal. You know, it's just so literal for, for what shows up. And so... What happened was last year, Madonna uh, began to write, uh, she's basically writing a movie of her personal life story. And what's the third house? It's writing. <laughs> so it was when she went into her third house, more or less, that she began this project. It's a, it's a huge project for her because it's a, it's a movie that is going to, I'm not sure if she's going to star in it or not. She, she probably will. I don't recall if I um, have clarity on that. But either way, she's writing the story to her whole life, how, where, where she was born, um, how she started out, and everything in between, everything that's happened until where she's at now in life. This is a third house thing. It's 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 writing, right? So um, I just found that very very interesting relative to uh, whole sign houses, annual perfections, and you know she's got 
<laughs> she's got Neptune in the third, so even though normally that would not be looked at um, when you're working with the uh, annual perfections, because as I said, we just stick to the traditional planets which exclude Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, but I, I would be inclined to kind of, um, you know, assess that that Neptune in the third because it's it's uh, I actually do see it. It's, it's describing um, the writing that she's doing is a lot of it is going to be about the, the glamour, you know, it's the glamour of the, the life that she's had. And, of course, it's going to include, you know, sort of ups and downs, highs and lows, whose life doesn't, right? But it's it's overall it's, it's that Neptune... Um, a filter perspective uh, of her life, right? <laughs> and so here she is writing, okay? So, yeah, I just thought that was really cute, uh, just as a very simple example. Um, yes, okay, I have covered everything I needed to cover. Hopefully that gives you guys um, something to think about. Now, this what I've shared with you today is not something that I just randomly come up with overnight. It's something that, as I said, myself and my colleague, mentor, friend, we've been looking at this for some time. And, and so I'm offering something that is a gift, actually, because not many people, first of all, even know this. And second of all, not many people um, have really made many videos on this subject. That's why a lot of you, you know, were very keen when I suggested that I would make a video. And I'm sharing an, uh, something with you guys that's been my own personal and professional observation with my mentor, who's one of the greatest astrologers on this planet. His name's Sean, by the way. Um, and what we have uh, been cultivating together through our practice and wisdom and understanding and insight and learning right and i'm just i'm just handing it over to you guys on a plate <laughs> right and so it is a gift for that reason but at the end of the day you will need to uh if you decide that you want to work with the principles that i've offered the considerations that i've offered you'll you'll need to look at this through many charts starting with your own of course and practice you know and observe and correlate observe and correlate and that's the way it is with astrology period but i've you know i've offered something substantial that could perhaps uh help you on your way in deciding as to you may decide you want to just work with whole sign. Hey, that's entirely up to you. Like I said at the very beginning, I'm not here to say you should do this and you shouldn't do that. Um, it's not my place to say that. But I will offer, like I have, uh, what I feel confident in through practice and observation and correlation. Ooh, okay, uh, see you guys soon with the solar eclipse uh, video, which it's coming up in about a week's time, the solar eclipse, and I'll be back to talk about that. And just finally, I forgot to say this in the beginning, I did want to say this about myself. Um, so I've began teaching uh, classes and the way it's sort of working out is that because the class is so big, it ends up becoming a workshop as opposed to just a, sing, a single class for an hour or two. So what I've done so far is the Venus star point. Many of you are aware, some of you may not be. Um, that was a three and a half hour class. That's available on uh, audio if, you, if you're interested in that. I highly recommend it if you want to know about the Venus star point. The difference between that and your natal Venus in your chart, um, much more to it than that. But it's a three and a half hour class, basically, with an interactive group. The next uh, workshop that I created is Venus forming a conjunction to all the planets, the four major asteroids, the nodes, uh, Venus uh, retrograde at birth, how to 
understand and calculate when she goes direct by progression and also the concept of conjunction from the point of view of first of all what does the conjunction aspect actually mean what actually is it and the fact that there is a new phase conjunction and a balsamic phase conjunction and they are very very different and mercury has been mercury retrograde has been playing up i hope this is all still recording because things have been pretty weird uh, with electronics the last couple of days um anyway my point is uh the the workshop that i just completed is actually seven and a half hours long that's available on audio if you would like to have that purchase it you just need to email me and we can work all that out and it's seven and a half hours so it is a workshop it's not you know just a two-hour class right it's it's really in-depth it's fairly complex it's it's a reflection of my own experience understanding and learning that I have accumulated over many many years so perhaps some of you when you saw me speak about I've got a class coming up with Venus conjunct all the planets you may think that oh, I don't know what Venus conjunct um, the sun means or Venus conjunct Mercury means I, I know what Venus conjunct the planets mean I, yeah that's basic stuff well not my not my seven and a half hour workshop it's not basic at all it's very in-depth it's got a lot of evolutionary content through it a lot of traditional content through it as well and it's for certainly for people who are beginning and it's certainly for intermediate people as well because of the amount of depth and content that I bring into this seven and a half hours and that's the way my workshops and classes will probably always be because that's just how I work that's how I work in my readings as well. When I do a reading, I spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on your chart. I can, You could give me your chart right now and I could do on-the-spot reading and I'd probably do a pretty good job, just to be honest, right? But that's not how I work. If I worked like that, I'd, um, <laughs> I, I'd have a lot more work. <laughs> but anyway, it's... The way each of us are in our practice is, in my opinion, is based on our uh, personality soul integration, our soul's level of evolution, our own understanding, um, our own experiences, our own intentions, desires and motivations. So, yeah, it's very different for all of us, right? Um, but that's that's how I work. I work, I mean, you know, I use esoteric astrology, evolutionary astrology, traditional astrology, and medieval astrology. I use all those levels in, in my work, which is huge. It's just huge. Like it's most people will just pick one stream, but I've picked several, and I'm I'm confident in my understanding in all those streams because I've I've read, you know, I've practiced, I've I've studied, I've learned, I've done, I don't know how many charts, you know, whatever. So the point is, it's I am the same when it comes to my teaching in my classes, my workshops, whether it's a two-hour class. Or whether it's an eight hour workshop you'll get a lot out of it okay it's not just basic stuff that you're going to read on the internet absolutely not so just letting you guys know all right see you guys soon much love and hope you're all doing well uh we're still in lockdown here which is it's really surreal eerie apocalyptic like it's just really yeah it's um weird weird Weird, weird, weird. <laughs> All right, see you soon. Bye.